Hello everyone, my name is Brian and welcome back to Aetherfall. Today we have chapter 5, where we finally meet the Nomanians. So without further ado, let's get started. The city of Nomani is unlike anything you've ever seen to this point. Ander Town and just about every other town in the game is little more than people scraping by together, truly surviving in a war-torn land. Nomani on the other hand, is a gorgeous paradise of the city with thriving districts and sea folk people swimming back and forth like an underwater New York. To keep you from dying under the high pressure, the Nomanian guards have placed spells that help you move and breathe under the waters. When under the water, speech is unavailable, so instead only sign language is used, which you unfortunately haven't learned yet. The city is a hybrid between underwater and air pocketed sections. While it looks ripe for exploration, Straying from the two accompanying guards too far obviously leads to them and every other guard hunting you down without hesitation. The guards will lead you to a large ornate palace, which is home to the Nomanian High Council. You'll be introduced to the council members, including the Grand Matriarch. Her full name is Makahine o na Hewewe, but you have permission to call her Makua. Makua appears to have great command over the High Council, and quells much potential infighting of the members. She and others will ask you plenty of questions, to which you can answer in a variety of ways, including lying and insulting them as options. You can explain that you come from a group of people known as the Unknowns, who washed up on the northern coast of Aldera with no memory. After listening to your statement, the council will bring up a surprising detail. They had scouts in the area the night of the incident, who reported that they saw multiple pod-like objects shoot towards the shore, disintegrating to show humans inside. The scouts were indicated to hold off from interacting with these pods. This piece of information is huge. It points to something bigger at play involving the unknowns. Going off this, the Nomanians wish to examine your brain, to try and understand a scientific level where your memories have gone. Agreeing to go with them to the medical facilities, Makua will personally oversee the procedure. As the scientists work, they'll mention that you are very healthy physically, and will remark on your attributes based on your stats. For example, if you're a powerful melee user who wields great swords and struts heavy armor, they'll praise your physical strength. And if you're a wizard, they'll mention your natural attunement to magic. After going over basic diagnostics, the team of scientists will mention something very troubling located within your brain. It appears that there is a magical hex made of dark magic placed around your brain. It appears to be what's hindering you from accessing older memories. They also hypothesize that this hex seems to be attached to both your vision and hearing sections of the brain, though they aren't quite sure what this means just yet. Finally. If you travel to Nomani with either Rex, Aurora, or Yoni, they'll note that they too have a hex in their cerebral cortex, though yours seems to lack a certain component that theirs does not. The team will extract a sample of the magic, explaining that they need more time to work on it, and will contact you within a week or two. With that, the Nomanians will send you on your way, not before Makua personally tells you to be careful and that you have the full support of the Nomanians in this troubling matter going forward. As a show of goodwill, you now have access to the rest of the city, spells necessary to survive being underwater, and your very own pet Salak, which is a dragon-shark hybrid like the one you met in the cave earlier, but obviously much smaller. Not only can you get this creature its own name, but you can use it to move around the seas. One more thing they'll give you before you go is a diagram of what the hex looks like, which they'll explain you may want to show to any other unknowns in case they've seen the symbol before. But this concerning new information brought forth, an item, and a new pet, you can make your way back up to the bay, coming back to Andertown for the first time in a long time. Back in Andertown, you'll notice that new buildings are being set up to provide housing for the unknowns. Several townsfolk will run up to you, asking about a few of the exploits you and your potential companion did on your journey to the Nomanians. They'll also mention 
that a few of the unknowns have left to go out on their own in the world. Luna and Theo will run to meet you, looking to be caught up on everything that's happened. You can explain that there seems to be a magical hex placed on your brain, and either show a diagram given to you by the Nomanians, describe it from memory if you dropped it, or say you dropped it and forgot what it looked like, which can change the direction of the story if done. Going with either of the first two options will cause Luna to spring into action. She'll say that she recognizes the symbol, and has run into these hexes while making progress in understanding what caused the amnesia. Having the hex tangibly mapped out may allow her to decipher the inscriptions and understand who placed them. She'll ask to operate on one of the unknowns, using the diagram to help her during the operation. She won't waste time, and Theo, you, and your companion will enter the operation room with her, as the residents will wait outside with bated breath. Beginning the procedure, Luna will take notes as she works. She'll explain that the energy appears to be dark energy, and that it seems to be synced with both the ears and eyes. Both observations made by the Nemanians. Theo will ask what this means, to which Luna will respond that it means whoever placed the hex is capable of both hearing and seeing everything the unknowns are doing. Theo will ask who you think is capable of doing such magic within the region, to which you can provide a number of answers. Luna will chime in that she may be able to determine who placed the hex, but will need to continue working. After several minutes, Luna will get closer and closer to uncovering something big, so will mention as much. Eventually, she'll exclaim that she figured out who placed the hex, and she may have an answer as to why. After saying this, she'll freeze in terror, repeating, Oh no, oh no, oh no, in a terrified tone. Her body freezes, her expression full of fear, before she collapses to the floor. There's panic and confusion. Theo will attempt to save Luna, or ask the player if you have a high enough magic level to heal her, but neither will be able to revive her. Luna is dead. Her lifeless body crumbled on the floor, with Theo weeping over it. With that, we finish off Act 1. As usual, feel free to comment if you have any thoughts, and subscribe if you wish to keep up with the channel. This has been Brian, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye for now.